Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Saturday edition of the Media Speaks. As I'm sure you've already heard, a schedule change on my part has made it so that I was not able to join everyone for the show. So I have pre-recorded this news from the science front. Uh, Washington's blog, uh, first of our two stories today, anti-science. Those who wish to debate climate threatened with death or jail. You know, people always laugh at the Flat Earth Society. Um, in the Flat Earth Society, you don't see people wanting to jail them or put them to death. Maybe it's because of the amount of information we have, and they're just not looked at as a threat. They now are going to make you believe in global warming. This is like, like the old crusades that you hear everyone complaining so much about. Um... This is absolute insanity. Man is not warming the planet. Man-made global warming is a lie. It's not happening. Look up climategate.com. It is not happening. Preface, the scientific method requires allowing all a free-for-all hypothesis, which then rise or fall based on the results of actual experiments. For example, imprisoning Galileo for life because he didn't agree with the accepted consensus that the sun revolved around the earth there was not a great example of a scientific method. Instead of conducting experiments, it says, to see whether the earth or sun were the center of the solar system, those with the prevailing view simply silenced the dissenter. Anyone who has studied the history of science knows that many of these theories were universally accepted and known to be true. It turned out to be false. Um, these examples are listed here from the Houston Chronicle and the Guardian. Noam Chomsky said years ago that he would submit to fascism if it would help combat global warming. Uh, for those of you that don't know, fascism is not just what Hitler does. Fascism is not... Um, uh, gassing Jews. Fascism is a corporate marriage to the state. It's very closely related to fascism. I mean, to, excuse me, to socialism. Um, in many ways. The difference is that in fascism, the dictator has more power than the communistic group which runs things. But let's face it, there were a lot of similarities between Hitler and Stalin. That's why they had peace. Um, they were. It wasn't that they were ideologically opposed as much as Hitler would like to think so. It was more that they were both power-hungry and insane, uh, and Hitler being more so. Suppose that it was discovered tomorrow that greenhouse effects have been way underestimated and that the catastrophic effects were actually going to set in 10 years from now and not 100 years from now or something. Well, given the state of the popular movements we have today, we'd probably have a fascist takeover with everybody agreeing on it because that would be the only method for survival that anyone could think of. I'd even agree to it because there's just no alternatives right now. In other words, let's trump up a fake not happening scenario and let's force people to believe in it at gunpoint so we can limit how much they drive under the lie that they are warming the planet we can limit how many cows they own and because of their farting look it up i look up cow farts global warming in 2006 gris called for nuremberg style trials for climate skeptics um, environmentalist Robert F. Kennedy Jr. lashed out at global warming skeptics in 07, declaring that it's treason and we need to start treating them as traitors. Well, sign me up first, because man-made global warming is a lie. Climategate.com. Put a house beat behind it. In 07, UN official Yvo de Buer warned that ignoring the urgency of global warming would be criminally irresponsible. And there's many, there's many quotes in here on this, um, on this, as far as people wanting to take it to this far. But I'm going to end with the last few paragraphs here before I go on to the next story and get back into the Saturday edition. Earlier this month, it says, an assistant philosophy professor at Rochester Institute of Technology said that he wants to send people to jail who disagree with global warming. And there are many other examples of threats made in this regard to the climate debate. It says, postscript. If we can't have free speech and an open scientific debate, then we are no longer living in a democracy or a society that allows for the scientific method, which is why they're trying to push fascism under the lie of global warming. Threatening scientific debate is anti-science and anti-liberty, it goes on. It is essentially troubling given the background of climate discussion, specifically in the 1970s. Let's remember, many American scientists were terrified of an imminent ice age. 
Obama's top scientific advisor, John Holdren, was one of them. Holdren and some other scientists proposed pouring soot, soot over the Arctic to help, the, to help melt the ice cap and so prevent the dreaded ice age. Holden warned of dire consequences, including starvation of the l and the largest tidal wave in history if mankind did not rally to the emergency basis to stop the coming ice age. Uh, what would have happened if we'd have listened to those scientists that were so sure of it back then, just like they are now? Even though the planet has not warmed in the last 15 years, this is a matter of public record. It's scientific fact. It's not something I'm making up. Were those who questioned the likelihood of the eminent ice age also threatened with death or imprisonment? Moreover, it is also concerning, it says, that many of the solutions proposed to combat a changing climate could do more harm than good. There are links to it. That's the sort of like invading Iraq after 9-11 because we had to do something. The last paragraph, and this is the best part, this is the nuts and bolts of all of it, friends. Uh, let's say that hypothetically... 100% of all climate scientists reached a consensus that man-made global warming from carbon monoxide was an imminent threat. Shouldn't we choose approaches that actually work and which do more or not not those which do more harm than good instead of messing up things even further? And there are links to uh, ways to do uh, do things for the environment in a responsible way that has nothing to do with shutting down the industry of the country. Uh, last thing I want to get to on the news from the science front here on Media Speaks Saturday edition, WashingtonPost.com. Americans finally understand that marijuana is less harmful than alcohol. Thank God. Finally. Uh, you, we can't agree uh, across the aisle, Republican, Democrat. Uh, we can't agree politically. The, the age groups, uh, the young don't agree with the old. The Republicans are fighting amongst themselves between the idiots and the libertarians. The libertarian party is too small to grow. It's called independent, blah, blah, blah. Most of America agrees on one thing that we've been lied to about weed. A new Pew survey out today provides yet another illustration of the failure of America's drug war by a nearly 5 to 1 margin and that is huge for you Kesha fans Americans agree that alcohol is worse for you than marijuana moreover since you when you slice up the data demographically majorities always say the same thing uh, this was true among and there's a graph here look it up it was true among men and women black whites and Hispanics all agree on it how about age groups? 18 to 29, 30 to 49, 50 to 64, and 65 plus. Uh, all of them agree that marijuana is uh, less harmful than alcohol. College grads, some college, high school or less, all agree. How about Republican, Democrat, Independent? Guess what? All agree. The, they're, they're, they're losing the propaganda war here because they're lying and we have the truth on our side. The elderly Republicans and Hispanics are the least likely to agree that booze is more harmful than weed. But even among these groups, respondents said that alcohol was more harmful by more than a two-to-one margin. At the end of the spectrum, blacks say alcohol is more harmful by eight-to-one margin. For those under 30, agree on nearly seven-to-one. So there you go. Uh, again, it shows that uh, people are more afraid of alcohol than weed. And uh, again, it mentions all the other drugs here. It mentions like things like shrooms and LSD don't have a huge toll on society, while things like coke and heroin do. And again, the answer to even really horrible things like coke and heroin is to monitor it. Keep it away. Keep it out of schools. That's fine. Monitor it. Monitor what people do. And every country that's ever done this has had better luck than nations that try to pursue what America has been doing. Um, the drug war has been an abysmal failure. Friends, that is your news from the science front. Going to try to get my schedule turned back around so that I can join everybody on the uh, show as I normally do. Till then, friends, I hope you enjoyed your news from the science front. Back to the media speaks.